Well, sports betting could soon be a reality again in the Sunshine State. With its refusal to rehear a challenge to the Seminole Tribe's gambling agreement with the state, a federal court opened the door again this week to online sports betting in Florida. That 2021 agreement previously legalized sports betting on tribal lands, but it only lasted about a month before the court decided to put a stop to it. Monday's decision means the industry can now legally return. The only question is when. CBS 12's Katie Benty joins us live tonight from downtown West Palm Beach with a breakdown of what this new ruling means for sports betting in our state. Katie? Liz, this could be the green light for the Seminole Tribe to go ahead and relaunch its online sports betting app as soon as Monday. And if they do, this could be huge for Florida. It could mean for partnerships with local racetracks and even bringing in third party online sports books in the process. It's another win for the Seminole Tribe in what seems to be an eternal battle to relaunch online sports betting in Florida. This week, a federal court refusing to rehear a challenge made by West Flagler Associates, which previously owned Magic City Casino. The court's mandate set to go into play Monday. After they issue the mandate, uh, I think you're going to see online sports betting begin again in Florida, uh, potentially within minutes after that mandate issues. If the Seminoles do relaunch, it'll strictly be on the Hard Rock Bet app, at least for a little while. They are under no obligation to allow any other gaming company to come in as a partner. They can operate the entire sports betting framework by themselves and have a, an outright monopoly. But South Florida sports betting attorney Daniel Wallach says when this door opens, the opportunities for the future of online betting are endless. The compact between the tribe and the state incentivized the Seminoles to partner up with places like the Palm Beach Kennel Club. There would probably be a section of the track that would house the bricks and mortar sports book and there would be TV screens all over the place and betting windows. You're with a lot of people who are doing the same thing, drinking, having a good time, talking. You're basically like watching as a fan, but at the same time you're having a stake inside the game. From there, places like the Kennel Club could bring in other online sports gambling partners, but all of it comes at a price. And enter into deals with DraftKings and FanDuel and whomever they want. But the, the catch here is that the Palm Beach Kennel Club will have to pay the Seminole Tribe 40 cents out of every dollar of sports betting revenue just to have the right to operate sports wagering. While it may not be directly profitable, it still brings in new business. Oh, all my friends would be absolutely amped for this. We reached out to the Seminole Tribe, and while they didn't have anything to say on when we can expect a relaunch, they did say they're happy with the court's decision to deny a rehearing. I think that when it does happen, we're going straight to the apps, straight to the casino and starting. So we're very excited. Anyone can go ahead and download the Hard Rock Bet app, but once you do, you can see it's, it's basically blank and it'll probably be like this until the relaunch, which again, could happen as soon as Monday. Reporting live in West Palm Beach, I'm Katie Benty, CBS 12 News. For the latest information about what happens next with sports betting and what websites can and can't be accessed, you can find the latest updates on our website. Just go to CBS12.com. Report beware. Thieves are targeting cars parked in the long-term lot, an area still lacking security cameras. And if that sounds familiar, that's because it's an issue our I-team has been covering for about four years now. I-team reporter Danielle Duras continues to push uh, officials for answers there at PBI. She's joining us now with the latest. Danielle? Well, Matt and Sam, it wasn't that long ago that we told you about Ford trucks being stolen and vandalized at PBI's long-term parking lot without any video surveillance footage to help investigators solve these crimes. As more time passes without PBI installing these cameras, criminals continue to target passengers and their property. And this time, it's Jeeps. So clearly they came prepared to do this and had a, had a tool that just, you know, you know I'm picturing them at the uh, NASCAR races zipping through this thing. I'm sure they did it in about five minutes. Ed Cooper has taken his Jeep to the body shop. He's expecting a bill in the thousands after finding his car in the airport parking lot like this. All of the nuts and bolts were all around the car, so it was a mess. 
Uh, they took the whole front bumper um, and then both headlights were gone. While he was out of town in late August, Cooper parked his Jeep on the top level of Palm Beach International's long-term parking garage and came back to find parts missing and this notice on his windshield from the sheriff's office. While on routine patrol, deputies noticed your vehicle's headlights missing. He called PBSO and filed a report. And then when we spoke with the officers, they said it looks like this is a new ring um, and there's they're stealing Jeep headlights and, and bumpers for some reason. It's just crazy. Did you ask the airport or the officers for security camera footage when you were there? Yeah, that was the first thing we said, would surely there must be a camera or something to show what happened. The officers are very quick to say they've been asking for years for cameras and yet there's uh, no cameras up there. There's only when you come in and out. What did you think when you found that out? Uh, I was surprised. Honestly, the biggest thing that I was concerned about is just safety. His wife posted this warning to other Jeep owners in a community Facebook group and they quickly learned they were not alone. A family friend also parked a Jeep at PBI around the same time, came back to find their headlights stolen. Here's another post in a forum for Jeep owners. Just had this happen at Palm Beach International Airport parking garage. Same time frame, same story about stolen headlights. Our search of public records with PBSO turned up another incident report. A Jeep owner from Vero Beach also had his headlights and his grill stolen off his Jeep the same week. Even airport employees are posting. One wrote this on the Nextdoor app. If you have a Jeep like the one below, do not park it at the West Palm Beach Airport. Can you imagine coming home from your trip at night, having to drive with no headlights? The sheriff's incident log shows that PBSO responded to 10 calls for stolen auto parts in just four days. Jeepers are commenting on the state of airport security using words like unbelievable and unreal, adding that they just assumed that there were cameras there a security blind spot the CBS 12 News I team has been highlighting for years. If a crime is committed in the parking garage, will there be any video surveillance to show it? Starting in 2019, we've been reporting on accidents, property damage, and theft inside the garage, pressing airport officials to explain why PBI is the only major airport in the region without cameras in the lot. So you're looking at the first sign that Palm Beach International Airport is stepping up its security measures. We told you when they started to install cameras in the short-term parking, but left the long-term lot uncovered. And that's where, last spring, we uncovered a wave of new crime. Multiple Ford trucks either burglarized or stolen off the lot while parked at PBI. How can an airport like that, that big, not have cameras? What do you think about the fact that they still don't have cameras and they've been made aware of this issue for years now? Yeah, I, I was shocked. With no yeah, video no evidence, Ed right, doesn't think the sheriff's yeah, office will be able to find the thieves so who hit his Jeep, should, uh, but he wants to warn others so they know what could happen the next time they park at PBI. We certainly won't drive the Jeep again to the airport, um, and I think I'll most likely Uber or left to the airport always. If my, my car's not going to be safe and my family's not going to be safe getting in and out of the parking lot, uh, we're just not going to park there anymore. As we always do, we reached out to airport officials for an interview. They did not agree to one, but they did send us a statement. And here it is in part. Quote, the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office has reported recent thefts of auto parts from Jeep vehicles and parking facilities in South Florida, including at PBI. PBSO has increased patrols of the parking facilities at PBI and continues to actively investigate. However, thefts may still occur. They go on to say, in addition to existing physical security measures and routine patrols, enhanced security improvements are in progress for long-term parking garages, as well as other locations on the airport campus, which will remain an ongoing effort throughout the end of this year, Matt and Sam. So they're working on it. They say, but they told us that several months ago. And what right. progress have we seen? Right. We'll, of course, stay on top of it. They're still not saying cameras. <laughs> right, right. They're not being specific about right. that. They've never really disclosed to us what their security plans are. Uh, but, you know, it's an issue we continue to follow years now down yeah. the road. Yeah. I mean, it's worth pointing out, too, though, that we've seen reports uh, not just from PBI, but uh, in other uh, local airports here about those headlights being mm -hmm. stolen. Just last night, Matt and Sam, what a strange coincidence. One of our very own co-workers posted she had a Jeep parked at Fort Lauderdale's airport, came back to find her Jeep without any headlights. Mm -hmm. So this is clearly yeah. a trend. Yeah. It's clearly something that thieves are doing at different airports, at different parking facilities. Uh, it's not just at PBI, but important to note, Fort Lauderdale has cameras, PBI does not. Mm.
All but right. I think a good point from this uh, gentleman that you spoke to, uh, if you do drive a Jeep, might not be the best time right now but to be dropping it off at the airport. Absolutely.